right welcome along guys cheers for tuning in so just a quick video in response to a comment that was asked during a live stream on my twitch channel just a couple of days ago so if you're not yet following me on twitch i posted a video up a couple of days ago asking anybody who is a twitch user who follows this channel to jump over and follow me on twitch steel river sims i'll put the link down there as well um all of my live broadcasts are now over on twitch um but i will still use youtube for these uploads so with that said i was asked about equipment and if it's worth it if it's worth the upgrade so a lot of people have covered this topic i would imagine and for the most part the general opinion is you won't go any quicker with high-end equipment um, or at least that's the when i've researched this stuff that is the general opinion that i've that i've uh, come come to from other people and i have to disagree i have to disagree with it i think over one lap i agree you're not going to be quicker over one lap but if we're talking about race distance then you have to take into account the consistency that higher end equipment provides okay so i have the Husingveld ultimate pedals and I have the Simicube 2 Pro motor with a sim racing coach, paddle, box, whatever that thing's called, and a turn racing rim. So nothing fancy on the on the wheel part. Well, the Simicube 2 Pro motor and the Husingveld Ultimate pedals, the originals without the software upgrade. So the only difference I've made to the pedals is I've swapped out one of the rubbers for a green one. I think it's a little bit stiffer. Um so a little bit of background from where i started i started on console xbox 360 forza motorsport fanatec gt2 rs and the first edition of club swap pedals and i enjoyed it good gear um then we moved to an xbox one that wasn't compatible so i sold that on um and i bought the tx458 from thrustmaster with the standard pedal box I bought what I believe is called the conical brake mod. Um, and then we upgraded them to the Fanatec V3 pedals with what was that called? The, the brake, was it the brake performance kit? So I've looked for upgrades. You can see I've looked for upgrades as we go. When I feel something's not quite right and my pace isn't quite where I felt it should have been, um, then I've upgraded when I felt necessary. And all of that stuff was great and it helped me progress into i racing and and build the i rating now the problem for me occurred when i hit 2.2 2.5k somewhere around that mark and i found myself in the top split in gt racing now again the background of my racing has always been predominantly touring cars even back on the console Clio Cups, touring cars, front wheel drive cars. So in the touring car series and I racing, I can hold my own with the top guys out there. Okay, I can consistently race them confidently, um, hit podiums time after time. However, put me in a GT race and I'm at the back. Okay, but I will be in the top split regardless. If I'm over 2.5k, as you guys will have found out yourself, you find yourself in the top split and you find yourself struggling because you're racing guys there who may be 8k 9k 10k from time to time and these guys are quick super quick super consistent now the consistency is where it matters for me now what i would find on the um the fanatec v3s which i would consider mid-range pedals i would say they're mi a mid-range pedal set um really good value for money i don't think you can get better value for money while we're on that subject um but the difference between that and the husingveld ultimates is night and day it's huge now the difference isn't where you may expect it you can't break later with these pedals okay and you can't get on the power earlier so that's probably where people think over one lap there's no there's no change but what it does is it it builds your confidence because it it allows you to be consistent lap after lap after lap. So you're able to hit your brake marker 
and you're able to hit 80% breaking threshold or 90 or 75, whatever you're trying to hit, you'll you'll hit it. And you may hit it on lower end pedals, entry level pedals. That's not really the point I'm trying to make here. The point that I'm trying to make and where they're really coming to their own is the bleed off, is when you start to come off the brake and the trail braking phase and you can hold um, 5%, 10%, consistency and uh consistently and feel it under your under your feet that's where these pedals come into their own and that allows that consistency and that helps you to build um confidence throughout a race i know i can hit whether it's the 100 board or the 50 board or you know a change in tarmac or a fence on the side or whatever it is i know i can hit my brake marker and i know it will slow me down effectively to the point of the trail braking phase in the cut if if Obviously, if the corner um, suits that sort of that sort of entry, obviously a lot of them don't. But if they do, I just have that confidence that that I can really lean on it and I can adjust the balance of the car using the the brake pedal. And then, obviously, the throttle pedal you have much more control over coming out. And this is what I'm talking about. This builds consistency. This builds your confidence over the course of a race. So. Yeah, if you're hot lapping and if you're trying to beat your personal best time and sort of looking at lap A and lap B on cheap gear and on more high-end gear, I don't think there will be a massive difference. And they're the sort of comparisons I've seen out there. But, yeah, for my opinion here, it's over race distance where it allows the improvement and it allows the confidence and consistency to build. So we've took... Um, since the upgrade, which is a couple of years now, I think I've had the pedals about a year and a half. And I think I've had, did I get the Simicube first? I think I got the Simicube 2 Pro first, but similar sort of times. And since then, we've gone from around 2.5k and we peaked at about 4.2. Now, to be fair, a lot of that was down to touring car racing. And to put it into perspective, I've spent the last week week and a half racing some other stuff i've raced a lot of gts i've raced some open wheelers um and we've lost about 800 i rating so yeah that kind of puts that into perspective which i'm fine with because like i say i'm in the top split regardless so all it does is when i get in them splits it means i lose less because of the i rating so the i rating doesn't concern me at all um what i'm interested in is good racing holding my own on the racetrack with other people um who i feel i should be able to fight with and time after time with entry-level equipment i would overdrive to compensate for the lack of consistency and i would cause myself problems and i would end up in the wall and i'm finishing more races i can't remember the last time i lost control of the car on my own on like in the braking phase or coming out of a corner um you can't account for traffic you can't account for people being silly on the racetrack and selfish and not considering other sim races or the users there's nothing you can do about that but in terms of my ability on a racetrack now and my performances i genuinely can't remember the last time i I'm not saying they made a mistake because obviously i'll probably make a mistake every lap um but we're talking you know big mistakes that'll end your race so since i've upgraded i can't remember the last time that i've done it and it was very frequent before on entry level stuff so I've gone on a bit longer than I would have liked to here, but I think you get the gist of it. If you are on the fence, if you're not sure whether to shell out, it is a lot of money um, for this stuff. We do have a very expensive hobby. But if you are on the fence and you've seen a few of these videos that say it won't make you any quicker, it will. Trust me, it will make you quicker, but it will make you quicker over a race distance and it will make you more confident and it will make you more consistent. And that's what it's all about. So before we go, if you could do me a favor, if you like this sort of stuff, the content, anything down there, 
uh, in the previous videos do me a massive favor click subscribe to this channel jump over to twitch and follow my twitch channel as well and if you are looking for upgrades like i said it's a very expensive hobby we have here martin from race anywhere has really helped me out with that affiliate link discount code obviously you guys save a bit of money there that also helps me with this channel keeps things moving which is is very good so i really appreciate everybody who's used that link in the past helping me out the website is down there so go check it out raceanywhere.co.uk absolutely smashing it at the moment the guys from race anywhere i don't think there's there's any website that will beat them at the moment they will ship anywhere They're very competitive on their pricing the stock is just building and building and building loads of people um getting in touch and getting their product out there through race anywhere so yeah check them out if you like this video guys do us a favor hit the like button and yeah subscribe if you're not already cheers guys see you next time